Today is Friday, April the 24th, and there were some interesting things that happened today with regards to the charts and the cloud um, and the McClellan Oscillator. But volume was low, as we've come to expect. The market dipped at the beginning and then just continued to rally. Can't say I know why. Wasn't watching it that closely. As you know, all my positions are covered with August or September um, short calls at the price that I paid for the stock. And uh, that's working out quite well. But it was mainly a green day. Advancers led decliners so that the stock market breadth just ticked up a little bit. And that's not necessarily where we wanted, well, that's in the right direction. But Monday or Tuesday, we want to test this number right up here, 2306, and see if we can get above that value and show that the bullish money is outpacing the bearish money. And if you look at the McClellan Oscillator, we've now had two days where we're above the zero line, which, as I told you before, we hadn't seen since March the 6th roughly the time at which everybody went into quarantine. So let's look at the summation index and you can see there it is just slightly above zero. We saw this before, except that it got rejected at the zero line and plummeted down. And that can still happen. So you've got to keep your powder dry. And I'm doing that by keeping short calls on top of everything. The uh, 12 month oscillator, you can see, from yesterday today, just a little bit of a tick higher, but we want to see something that's higher than this point right there. The uh, volume looked like this. The buying volume was lower than we saw the previous two days, but the selling volume was a little bit higher. The volume stacked looks like this, where, yes, where today was a lower volume than yesterday, but the second highest volume of the week but that's not saying much because we've now had two weeks of volume that is higher than when, the, than when the Dow was making its highs. You can see back here. When the Dow was making its highs, we were having 4 million shares on the New York Stock Exchange traded every day. Um, now we're running a little bit higher. Oh, we changed colors. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Um, there you go. Uh, so the volume isn't telling us very much. It's been consistent for the last two weeks, but we would like to see this type of volume here, where we saw all of these big, big plus days and very little in terms of the negative volume days. So we need to get back over 7 million in terms of traded shares to, uh, to really get excited about uh, reverse trend, bullish trend. So the SPX, the SPX, look at this, stopped dead at the top of the cloud. And it's not the only stock that did that. Apple ended the day at the top of the cloud at its high of the day. Let's take a look at Apple on the week. Apple on the week ended up pretty much flat with last week. So it was able to recover all of the week's losses. Let's look at the SPX for one week now. And you can see SPX on a weekly um, ended below last week, but a little bit, uh, well, up near the top of its range for the week. So it was still a losing week for the S&P, um, but it's going in the right direction. Last week we saw the uh, Chiku Span hit the 200 EMA and pull back. So that was probably a sign that we, while well, we didn't look at it, um, it would have been interesting to have done so. Uh, Caterpillar up a dollar 13, up 1%, a little bit less in the market. It's in the cloud, but the Chiku span is free and able to move up with no restrictions. So Caterpillar will chop while it's in the cloud. And you can see that the slow moving SMI or the fast moving SMI is at the bottom, meaning that it's got nowhere to go but up. And the slow moving, the 40 period SMI was flat for a period of time. 
and now needs to complete its trajectory up. So Caterpillar should be moving up. Cisco looks like this, where it's still struggling with having met its first um, bat target and then pulled back and it's looking to hit that again, see if it can break through. Um, Facebook had a big day above the 200 and got rejected just a little bit below the 200 simple moving average, but it bounced off of the cloud today and the 8 EMA, they were both at the same point, so that you know, whenever you see those type of coincidences, price is going to seek those coincidences. Technical traders are looking for that. On a weekly basis, we finished um, outside of the cloud with the Chiku Spen above the candles. So all of this, let's just put a flag in here, all of this is good for uh, Facebook going forward. And I'm just going to mark that as a visibility on the one week only. It doesn't mean anything on the daily chart. Um, <coughs> Home Depot had an amazing day, up 10%, and it stopped dead on the 200 um, EMA. So we said it, go, it had a chance to go through the thin cloud, and that's exactly what it did. Stopped at the 200, but the next place it's going to stop is when the Chiku Span hits either the 50, which has crossed the 200 here. So next week, that should be um, a point of attraction right there, where the 50s and the 200s have crossed, and that would be double resistance for the Chiku Span. That would be in the area of 218, 217.95, 218. So watch that. Let's just put an alert right there. Um, let's get it a little bit more accurately. And let's say that it's right there. So let's put an alert right there at 218.13. And we should see some definite resistance there. Now we've got a flat cloud, which means the resistance could push us later on in the week down to the cloud. So if you're short some calls on top of your Caterpillar, I'm still short the August 220s, then you don't have to worry about it. That's all good. Uh, Netflix down 286. Looks like it's completed the top level of its Gartley pattern. And this is actually a butterfly in the Gartley family. Um, Nvidia had a great day. Nvidia started losing money early in the day and then pulled right back. That's because of Intel's earnings last night. Intel, another chip company, the leading chip company, reported not so good earnings and a not so good forecast. So that pulled Nvidia down. It took a while for traders to figure out that Nvidia is a different company playing in a different chip space and it ended up quite strongly. So I still have the four um, call spreads there that are doing okay. Uh, the next place that I would add any more call spreads is over 298. So I'm going to set an alarm there, and that would be a nice time to add more June call spreads. My call spreads are the 290 and the 300. Um, so I would add maybe the 300 and the 305 or the 300 and the 310, because we're still heading towards 333.95 if this alternate bat pattern is to be believed. AT&T uh, stopped at the 8 EMA. Whirlpool up and now um, approaching the cloud. Amazon uh, still struggling with the 138.2 percent. Probably um, people are spreading their money around and have made a lot of money in this pop on Amazon as well as Netflix and now they may be taking a little bit off and um, playing with some other stocks that haven't quite, you know, exceeded this XA that you're seeing on the Gartley patterns for so many different stocks. Uh, what, what else do we want to look at? Let's look at um, some of the new ones that we've been looking at for people. So Hertz, still no rush to get into that. Uh, budget said today that they were probably looking to um, raise some capital. So that's not going to be too exciting for Hertz having to take on more debt. Uh, Burger King's franchise holders above the 50. Uh, we set an alert right here. It hasn't, this is a weekly chart, but it still hasn't uh, passed that yet. APT tried to break out of this wedge, but didn't. It, it did hit an alert 
and then it pulled back. So keep watching that one if you're looking at APT. Um, Smile Direct. Let's look at Smile Direct in a second. BP, um, doing nothing. Uh, another oil company, uh, Exxon, just below the 50, doing nothing. CrowdStrike did pop above this trend line. So if you're looking to buy CrowdStrike, I would wait for it to come down and retest this and see if there's still some buyers. But look at the volume today. That would indicate that there were some institutional buyers that got involved. You won't see that data on FinViz until the next report comes out of what the institutions are holding. Um, but that's something to look at in the next uh, next report. Now, silver stopped at the top of a flat cloud. GLD. Now, remember, GLD is not owning pure gold. If you want to own pure gold, go and buy Krugerrands or the Canadian Maple Leaf or real gold. GLD, if people are pouring money into GLD, they will just go out and buy more gold. Um, and it's not really a true measure of where gold is at. Look that up, Google it, read about it. It's a derivative for owning gold. But because it's an ETF and it's not a closed-end fund, they're going to continue to buy and buy. Um, but we have not passed this trend line which you drew here. Um, so that's interesting. So if you want to buy gold, buy the real thing. Um, GDX, on the other hand, this is the miners who produce the real thing and sell the real thing on the open market. And they are buying and selling their, uh, their raw material or their, their produced material at the real gold price. And they're not influenced by what GLD does. They're influenced by what gold is really buying and selling for. So my bet is rather than invest in GLD, I would rather invest in GDX. And I once had some GDX and I got out with a profit after, you know, all these um, months, in fact, close to a couple of years of losing money. So when we did get up to this $30 point, you know, I started to get out. Um, is it time to get back into GDX? It may very well be, but it's going to be when it breaks out of this. So we'll put an alert for when it crosses the trend line. So where are we going next week? Let's take a look at the S&P. S&P still needs to, let's look at the daily. S&P still needs to break above the cloud, but the Chiku Span says that we probably will. Combine that with the McClellan Oscillator that I think really wants to test this level up here. So money will move in, and we're going to get to this level or darn close to it. And that's going to be the test. Do we close above it or do we get rejected and have the close the following day lower to have one, two, our third successive lower high? That's what I'll be looking for next week.